<laughs> Hi everybody, it's me. Today's menu is a rosto di maiale. It's a pork tenderloin. It's a very very tender meat, so it doesn't take much time to cook. So, but before I do that, I'm going to season it with star anise. This is this this little beauty here. It's very aromatic, delicious for for pork. Sorry, this rather can't find the camera. <laughs> so, so this is because I grind my own uh, seasoning. So it's it, it's five to six petals of of the um, star anise and black peppercorn and rock salt because it's easy to grind them with the rock salt. So in, in this amount, this is what I've got. This is what I've got. It's about, it's a teaspoon level, level teaspoon. So that's, let me just show you so you can see if you want to, but you can always adjust. You can always adjust it for yourself, the uh, salt and pepper. So before all that, before all we can, before all that, we are going to show you. I'm going to put these. Um, I'm going to put olive oil first in order to to stick the so that the seasoning will stick. Also, also a teaspoon teaspoon of mustard. My starter to go for for pork. Also, that will also help to for the rub for the seasoning. I just use my hand. If you want, you can use brush, kitchen brush, if you have it. I haven't got it any in my kitchen. So just roll it over the oil and mustard before you add the seasoning. And and I keep my other hand dry so that I can take the seasoning to sprinkle it over the, the pork. All over the pork really. And we're gonna I'm gonna roast this for after a while. This that's it. So I'm going to leave this where here there. I'm going to leave this for about half an hour before roasting it. That will give me plenty of time to prepare all the side dishes, which is tomato, to, not tomato, potato uh, puree, potato puree with rosemary, and and the green to go with it is this wonderful kale. It's just beautiful. I just picked it a minute ago. So the potatoes and the kale are both from our garden. Grazie. Yeah. But, not, so, but not the pig. Maybe next year. So, <coughs> other hand dry so that I can take the seasoning to sprinkle it over the, the pork. All over the pork, really. And we're gonna, I'm gonna roast this for after a while. This. That's it. So I'm going to leave this where here there. I'm going to leave this for about half an hour before roasting it. That will give me plenty of time to prepare all the side dishes. <coughs> okay, here's the here's one of the side dishes or for green today is beautiful kale. Look how big it is. And I'm just removing it from the stalks and I'm going to blanch it quickly I don't want to lose any of the vitamins what's in it what's in there I'm just going to blanch it blanch it in boiling water very quickly quickly we don't want any overcooked vegetables in this house it looks it look, might look a lot but they will <coughs> will wilt down I'm just going to, uh, after for uh, two minutes, maybe even less, depends how, how much your vegetable, how cooked you like it. I like it really, really just barely done. 
and then I'm going that looks like it that's more like it that's how I like it so I'm just going to, to drain this to the sink and then run it with cold water to stop it from cooking look at this look how beautiful they are look how beautiful they are after I blanch them now I'm just going to squeeze out of some of the excess liquid, which is a lot, after I wash them from the sink, from the running water. Some people like to dip it in cold ice water after it's been cooked. But for me, running water is just as well. So there it is. So I'm going to heat it up when I'm ready to serve. I'm ready to serve and chop it up a little bit so it's easy to eat, easy to manage with fork. That's it. That will do me. Uh, potato peeling, potato, potato peeling time. Potato, we love potato. potato. Peeling. If, uh, we try. Well, we have lots of potatoes. Like, I do like to incorporate anything I can grow in the garden to the kitchen. We have lots of potatoes. I, I what would happen if with these young potatoes, if you did it without the with the skin instead of peeling them? Would you? Um, uh, people, you don't have to peel potatoes. You can cook it directly. You can cook it without peeling it. I like skins. Uh, but it depends on what you're doing. If oh, this is for puree, of course, yeah. naturally. Uh, uh, chop, 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 chop. Chop chop. Chop chop. Chop chop. Potatoes are chop. peeled, chopped into chunk, cut, <laughs> chop, cut the same. And I am ready to boil them. This might, this might take 5 to 10 minutes, might take longer, it might take shorter time. So let's have a look before I puree them. In the kitchen. Yeah, Look well, at that, five Potatoes, pans. potatoes five bubbling, pans, pasta five sauce pans. bubbling. <laughs> pasta, potato, antipasti, salad. salad. Guess who's just arrived? It's Stan and Honey Ciao. with beautiful looking masks, lots of wine. Ciao. Uh, no, oh yes, no. thermometer and all that. You're supposed to do a temperature, right? Is that correct? No. Okay. Chopping rosemary to go with chopping rosemary, Tim's favorite name is rosemary. Um, to go with the potato puree, but before I can puree, it's still boiling there, it's almost ready. I'm going to put the milk first and warm it up, heat it up, that's 200 milliliters. And you don't want it to boil. You can never have enough rosemary. It's a, it's a smell of, of Mediterranean. I know I said it a million times, although I only have eight episodes of this uh, video. Are you boiling milk for? What are you going to use the milk for? I'm going to use milk for to puree the potato. Ah. So wait, wait and see. Wait and see the transformation. Potato, transferring the potatoes, transferring the potatoes to food processor, and this now you see why I need milk. I need milk to puree. So here it is. I'm just there's the milk. Did you melt butter in there? The butter, the butter is and parmesan. This, this I need to put a warning sign. I need really? to put a warning sign on this dish. It's rich. It's rich and rich. Uh, it's milk infused with rosemary and then butter in it. And in go to the potatoes. And let's see. Let's try. Okay, I, it depends how you like your puree how soft, how creamy you like it. So this consistency will do, but still very hard for me. So I will add more milk for this 
butter, a little bit more, and keep the milk. I'm keeping this milk because I might need it later when I'm ready to serve when I'm uh, ready to heat up, ready to heat up the puree. No need to talk about flavoring to add here is because we're in Italy. We have Parmigiano Reggiano grated already, freshly grated, not the one you get from the jar. Okay, that's it. That's it for now. I'll come back. This is realistic. Don't, don't, don't. Are you filming me? Yes, of I'm course. Putting I'm, putting I'm putting it back to the pan. No, you should. Sorry, I forgot to put my hat on. I forgot to do this. <laughs> you see, I forgot. I'm not the camera. I just do it without. Yeah, you... This is the uh, kale that I blanch. Now I'm chopping them. After I squeeze the excess liquid, I will lightly saute this on olive oil to warm it up before serving. There it is, so there we go, and I'm saving these bits here. This is the end of the prawn. We have this already. We have this. And then we don't need it because we done this two weeks. Pasta sauce, right? Pasta. Now let me taste it again. I taste it. Ah. Super delicious. And the the guts are removed and the bone. See that? It's very fiddly work. It's fantastic for antipasto today. I will uh, show you next time I do it because I got out of time by doing this. But this will be for a great antipasti today. So, Anchovies, fresh, and then you put uh, the pepperoni, which yeah. is uh, unpeeled, and then, uh, peeled, and then you also put olive oil. That's all. Olive oil and lemon juice. Lemon juice. Okay. Or vinegar. Chin-chin! Chin-chin! Here we are. Social distance sing song. Something. Bummer. Mmm. Lovely. Mmm. Oh, very good. Not bad. Not bad. Very nice. Oh, sorry. I'm on... Very good. <laughs> Last week, what did I do? Fish. Fish. <laughs> Fish. Fish on the menu. The, uh, cut, removing the bones in the middle is, it takes a lot of practice. Um, for me, I feel it. It's, uh, I learned it myself. Yeah. No camera. So, if I have to talk, I may talk about this because we can use it another time. So uh, this is my not beautiful anchovies. You make it beautiful because because, <laughs> because it's cost cutting menu. <laughs> yeah. And oh how beautiful. Oh the flowers. Beautiful. Anchovies full of flowers. Oh, how beautiful. Oh, the flowers. Beautiful. <coughs> Whenever we do meet up. <coughs> okay, so... The meat has been marinated for half an hour. Now it's ready to sear it before putting it in the oven. So the pan is already hot. I'm putting about two tablespoons. I always start with two tablespoons of olive oil and put that away for me. And I'm just going to 
zero it, that you can hear the sizzling, that's the good sign. Good sign. This will take this will take on every on all sides about two minutes of stirring before depending on the size of the the fillet so brown it. To keep the moisture from the meat, we want it. We do not want to dry it for sure. So we add butter more to keep it to keep it really yummy. When I'm going to do uh, 20 minutes, 25 to 30 minutes will do. We just want it really yeah, we can fix it. Oven has been preheated for five minutes or longer if you want. So 180 degrees. 180 degrees, don't burn your fingers like I do it. And 25 to 30 minutes. Oh, here. Mm. Meat just, the meat is nicely roasted. I'm just going to wrap it in the clean, on aluminum foil to keep it warm while it's resting at the same time. Yeah, okay. Leave it there. Send me wrong quick I easy. have to wait until the right moment. Um, I was so surprised myself as well because I look. What did uh, you just put into the. Um, this, I put. Um, What's that thing you put? Ah, Ah, Starnies. Starnies. This is the sauce. Um, baking sauce. Use the same pan where you roast the meat because it's got all the goodies in it so why waste it so what? i add a little bit of butter and stir it and taste it let's see we have to taste it we have to taste it if, if you have brandy apple brandy my preference for this recipe if you have it, add a drop or a glass. This glass of brandy will be great in here. So let me show you the meat here. Let me just, this is the meat. It's ready to carve. This is the meat ready to carve. It's been resting, resting for about 10 minutes. So all the juices, all the juices come from where Put it back into the pan. It, don't ever waste it because it's got loads of flavor in it. So put it away and let's see. Keep, keep boiling. Keep boiling. Come on now. Everything is going in at the same time. Now, if you remember the uh, milk that I had saved for um, puree, there was a reason for it because um, I'm going to add it now. This is part of the prep. Sometimes it's easier this way to easier for you to you do it first but before serving and now when you're ready to serve you just add warm milk and the puree becomes alive again. Wasn't that the milk where you added the butter and the That's rosemary? Exactly what I'm saying. Exactly what I'm saying. It's the um, the warm milk that I use for pureeing the potato. I, the reason I say it is because I will need it in case the potato gets cold. Potatoes now. <laughs> potato gets cold. Mash potatoes. It. And it is. It really depends how you like it. How you like it, sir? Your sauce so, is boiling. So sauce is boiling really nicely. So the puree is over here for the kale because it has been squeezed and squeezed up, squeezed the excess liquid now. I'm warming it up as well before serving. So all coming up together. A little bit of salt and pepper. Depends on your shape, how you like it. So, 
Here it is. Here we go. Now I'm ready to put the thickening for the uh, for the sauce, which is cornstarch. Only if you need to thicken. If you like, if you like, you can add butter. That will do. That will do the trick as well to, 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 to thicken the sauce. And I think I'm happy for it. Now you can put it on a, on a sieve to remove all the bits that you, that come from the roast. We say the same food with something. So I will tell you how to do it. Okay, now that is my puree. It's fantastic. I want it really soft. Mmm. Mmm. Lovely. Mm. 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 The light has been thickened. Now, um, you can use this directly to sauce the meat. But, if you want, you can put it in the sieve to remove the bits that came from the roast. Only if you want, otherwise you don't have to do it. That's entirely up to you. That's, that's my... See? See, that's what I meant. Plate mm. mm. up is always the most wonderful thing. After you work, and the anticipation of good meal is there. So the puree first is only put on a tablespoon. A tablespoon because we have big pasta. And now I'm putting I'm putting the kale always underneath. My plating up is always put it underneath. Never try to cover up anything you're serving, anything you're serving, not hiding anything. I'm ready to carve the meat, which is, if you want to see, you see how smooth and, and soft it is. This is, oh, I'm so happy, so, so happy. Look at that. Look how beautiful they are. Smell it. And I can most definitely taste it. Yeah. At this point, my camera battery expired. So here are some images from everyone else's cameras showing us sitting outside and eating the antipasti, the white wine, and the pasta dish. Luckily, we found out in time to be able to record the red wine and the roast. The second course, or is it the third course, is the Mayali for all the meat eaters. And Tim is going to taste this wine. So the red wine today, again from Stan, thank you guys, Ludovica, which is from the little winery in Torre Bormado, which they went to last week. And it's called Longhi Rossi. So let's see what a Longhi Rossi from Torre Bormado is. Hmm, it's got a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful nose. Oh, yes, yes, we actually forgot to do the usual thing is to hold it up to the light to look at the color. It's very dark, a nice dark color there. And to me, the nose and the color says Barbera. So let's give it a taste. is Barbera. It's a wonderful Barbera. It's a wonderful, drinkable, delicious Barbera. And I think you said five euros a bottle. Fantastic. Go to Tori Longy, Tori Longy, <laughs> Tori Bormado, <laughs> and get some Longy Rosso. And cheers, everybody. And cheers. Welcome. Cheers. Uh, have a wonderful time wherever you are. Stay safe. Obey your safety rules, distances, masks, and everything like that. And please do come to Piemonte. 
uh, August is we are open again for everybody. If you want to come a little earlier, uh, send us an email and we'll see what we can do to accommodate you. Ciao. So we are tasting today the pig meat made by Rina with some uh, potato mash, potato with uh, rosemary. And cream and butter and parmesan. Of course. <laughs> That's the standard way to make the everything nice. And it's delicious because he uses these spices. The fusion cooking, it's cardamom from India, which is really nice. Oh, fantastic. And, and as a green, there is some kale. Yeah, I'm also surprised because in the Netherlands we only eat that when it's frozen. Uh, frozen weather in the winter. I think of kale as Russian. Eat lots of kale. Go out mm, and play and ice hockey. And Dutch also. But anyway, imagine and it's in lovely. The but it makes a good combination, it's I a think. Very nice combination. With the Mayali. Fantastic. <laughs> bon appetit.